All right, folks, you get just my voice this time instead of the, uh, the camera. Uh, I'm at home right now, and I didn't bring it with me. So, uh, just the mic, but a different squeaky chair. So, I still got that going for me. So, we're talking about GDP this week, uh, gross domestic product. And we'll get into what this means, but it has to do with growth and the health of the economy. You have to write all this stuff down or anything like that. But this is just showing um, uh, what it is we want to do as an economy. Economy, which is we want to be able to produce more stuff. More production means that we have more goods and services, which means we can satisfy more wants. If you remember that problem of scarcity, where we have uh, finite resources to satisfy infinite wants, well, if we can't satisfy all the wants, then which ones are we going to satisfy? Well, the more we produce, that means the more wants we can take care of. So uh, when we talk about growth in a society, we're not talking about making more money. I mean, making money is easy. We can just make it up out of thin air, literally. Um, but here we're talking about making stuff. Okay. This is where the health of the economy is. This is where economic growth is. The more you produce, that means the more wants you can satisfy within the society. So this is what we're aiming for. All right. So economies want to grow. Like I said, we use this as a measurement of health. And if you ever see the term per capita, per capita means per person. It literally means per head. So we talk about GDP, but we can also talk about GDP per capita, which is talking about how much are we producing on a per person basis. And this is what GDP is, gross domestic product. Gross domestic product is a dollar value of everything that we produce. All right. So we'll say that uh, GDP is say $20 trillion a year. We're not making $20 trillion. We're making $20 trillion worth of stuff. All right. Goods and services that we are producing. So this is GDP, right? A dollar value that measures the value of everything that we are producing within our economy, within our country, within our society. All right. And oftentimes when we're measuring standard of living, we'll use GDP per capita. How much are we making on a per person basis? We could be making a lot, but uh, how much are we making per person? If we have a large GDP, but we also have a lot of people, say China, which is that case, they have a large GDP, but they also have you know 1.3 uh, billion people in uh, uh, the country. So you can have a big GDP, but you divide it up amongst a whole lot of people. That means it doesn't look nearly as impressive on a per person basis. So it's not just about everything that you produce. It's also about how much are you producing per person. So uh, this map right here shows you the uh, each one of these countries has a GDP equivalent to uh, these states. So Texas, you're looking at that one, has a GDP equivalent to uh, about all of Canada. So that means that the state of Texas produces goods and services that are valued about the same as everything produced in Canada in a given year. <laughs> yeah, take that, Canada. All right, or if you look at California, it produces as much as the United Kingdom. You look up at New York, North Korea, Florida, where it produces as much as Indonesia. Or another way of looking at this is the United States produces as much as 50 different countries combined, which means we have a big honking GDP, which we do. All right, you can look at it as a metropolitan area if you want to. So the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex produces about as much as the entire uh, country of Taiwan. Uh, Houston metro area is about equivalent to all of Poland. Uh, this shows the same thing. Oh, you can pause this if you want to. This shows you the uh, level of GDP around the world. So the darker blue, the higher the GDP. The lighter the color, the lower the GDP. And where do we rank? It depends on the measurement you're looking at. This measurement in this year uh, showed us around uh, number 17. Usually we're somewhere between 9 and 15, 17 or so, depending on the uh, year in question. This is GDP per capita, by the way. So you can see who's above us. You can see who's below us. All right. And then you look at where we are in terms of population. We're the third most populous country after China and India. We're the third biggest country as far as geography goes behind Russia and Canada. Very close third to Canada. That's somewhat debatable, actually. China debates being number four. But the reason I throw this out here is that the U.S. ranks as highly as it does in GDP per capita, uh, even though it's far larger uh, in terms of both geography and population than these other countries that are above us. 
Uh, not only that, but uh, we're much more diverse than a lot of these other countries. That means we have a lot more challenges than these other uh, ones that, that are uh, on top of us, like Norway. All right? Norway, believe it or not, uh, is uh, far smaller than the state of Texas and has a population uh, that is actually smaller than the DFW Metroplex. Uh, I'm not kidding there. Uh, DFW Metroplex has about... Uh, one million people more than uh, the entire country of Norway. Or maybe it was one million people less. I can't remember. I have to look it up. But that's the difference in population between us and Norway. When Norway uh, is above the U.S., right? But you look at us when we have the economic challenges that we do, uh, in terms of geography and population, we're doing as well as we are. Hey, pretty good. Now, GDP, what do we count and what do we not count, right? Because if you're thinking about everything we produce in our economy, we have to figure out what will be included and what won't be included. Uh, so this is looking at what we count and what we don't count in terms of GDP. When we're figuring out that dollar value, that dollar figure, what is it we're going to include? Well, what do we include? First of all, it's only final goods, not intermediate goods. What a final good is, is the end of the line product. It's not something that goes into the production of something else. So an example of this would be, uh, let's say, uh, copper. Let's say we've purified some copper, uh, but then we take that copper and then we later turn it into copper wire. And then the copper wire is put into a Romex, uh, this wire that goes into your house and you use the wire that. And then we sell the house. Well, we're not going to count the copper by itself. Why not? Well, it's because the price of the copper goes into the value of the wire, which then goes into the value of the bigger wire that goes into your house, which then goes into the value of your house. If we counted the copper by itself, we'd be counting it multiple times, right? Or if we uh, say tires, well, let's say that uh, uh, Ford Motor Company comes along and buys some tires from Goodyear and puts them on their Explorer. We don't count the tires by themselves because they'll be in the price of the car. So we counted the tires by themselves, we'd be counting them more than once. Once by themselves, and then once again when they're on the car. So we're not going to do that. We only count the car. We count the final good, not intermediate goods. Okay. Now, let's say that you went to a discount tire and you bought those exact same tires and put them on your car. In that case, then the tire would be the final good because we're not using it to produce or sell something else, right? It's the end of the line product when you buy the tires. It's not the end of the line product when Ford buys the tires. So we only count final goods, not intermediate goods. We also only count domestically produced goods. This is where the domestic and gross domestic product comes from. As long as it's produced inside the U.S., it counts towards U.S. GDP. What matters is where the product is made. It does not matter who makes it. So you could have, say, Nissan or Toyota that can make cars inside the U.S. The, uh, that car will go towards U.S. GDP, right? Not Japan's GDP because it's being produced inside the U.S., so what matters is where it's made, not who makes it. Okay, And you also have to have a market transaction for that year. So it has to go onto the market, actually it has to be sold. Okay, so that's what we count. What don't we count? We don't count the intermediate goods, right? So like those tires that Ford is going to buy, don't count those because we counted them more than once if we did. Okay. We don't count used goods. Used goods, uh, first of all, uh, that used good, when it was brand new, counted in some previous year's GDP. All right. When we're looking at GDP, we're looking at the production of new goods and services, not old goods and services. Okay, so if you sell your car that's 10 years old, well, nothing new was produced. All you did was change ownership of something that was already existing, that was already there. So we're not going to count used goods, only brand new production. Okay, purely financial transactions don't count. If you buy stocks or bonds or certificates of deposits, that's uh, what the CDs uh, are, uh, those don't count because there's nothing being produced, right? A stock is not really something that's produced, right? It's not a good or service in that sense. We're only counting the production of brand new stuff. So merely financial transactions don't count. Uh, money movement doesn't count either. So uh, well, we'll get to that here in a second. Unreported legal activity. This would be things like tips or something like that you get at work. You're supposed to report them on your taxes, but you don't for, oh, uh, I can't imagine why you would do that. Uh, so here, uh, if nobody's reporting it, we can't measure it, so therefore we don't count it. Okay, illegal activity is not counted. 
Now, this doesn't mean that some illegal activity can't have a contribution to GDP. It's just that uh, it turns out criminals are not going to be very open about what, uh, the amount of product they're moving in a given month, let's say. And so, uh, because we can't measure it, again, we're not going to count it. So, yeah, that's, that's not going to count. Yep. Uh, U.S. companies are citizens making goods somewhere else. Again, it matters where it's made, not who makes it. So if Americans are making things somewhere else, it does not count towards our GDP. Okay, non-market activity. What this means is if it doesn't go onto the market, it's not going to be sold. It is not going to count towards GDP. So if you make a pie for yourself, it doesn't count. If you make a pie and you sell it, then it counts. Okay. Now, the reason non-market activity doesn't count is that if it doesn't go onto the market, if it is, is not sold, we don't know what it's actually worth and how much to count it for GDP. Right? Uh, you can say, well, if I mow my own lawn, that's worth about $500. Well, okay, you can say that, but if you don't actually sell that service of mowing your lawn, we don't know that it's actually worth $500. Bucks, right? If nobody actually buys the service for the price you put on it, then that means it clearly wasn't worth that. So if it doesn't actually go onto the market, we don't know the value. So therefore, we're uh, not going to count it. Okay, so is it a part of GDP or not GDP? Pause it right now. Look at each one of these and answer for yourself. This is going to be in GDP or not. Take a moment. Pause now. All right. So uh, maybe you wrote it down somewhere. You just got it in your head. These are the answers right here. Yep. All right, so uh, I'll skip past that. Now, what we do when we use the GDP, we use what we call aggregate spending, all the money that's getting spent, and we divide it up into four very broad categories. We have C plus IG plus G plus XN. Uh, consumption, gross private investment, this is business spending. The big G, which is government spending, and net exports. And I just want to look briefly at each one of these. What falls in the consumer spending? This is what you buy. You buy goods and services, it falls under the C, right? Your consumer, anything you spend money on, generally is going to be consumer spending. For the United States, you make up 70% of all GDP, right? We're very much consumer oriented, right? Gross private investment, this is business spending. Anytime businesses spend money, this is them investing in capital for uh, making a profit, right? So businesses invest, remember from their point of view, they're investing in capital when they buy these resources, computers, build factories, because they want a positive return in kind. Any sort of, I always forget about this typo, any new construction falls under this. Even new homes falls under uh, IG. Okay, government spending, anytime the government spends money on anything, practically anything, if it's going to be for a good or service, they pay people to work for it, they build, uh, buy aircraft carriers, they buy copy machines, this is big G, all right? Uh, transfer payments, like the government paying people social security payments or paying, uh, say, food stamps, EBT, something like that, that does not count. And the reason for this is, is that's merely moving money around within the economy. So social security payments to a recipient is just taking money from you and your paycheck and giving it to somebody else. So no good or service is being produced. And then finally, net exports, which is exports minus imports. And this just takes into account that money flows in and out of the country, right? So if you export goods, money comes in, counts towards GDP. If we import stuff, money goes out, counts against GDP. So we have it all together. GDP, when we measure it, we look at consumer spending, we look at business investment, we look at government spending, and we look at exports and imports. All right, I'll touch on this real briefly. There's nominal GDP and real GDP. Nominal GDP is looking at what is GDP worth in a year and that year's dollars. But what we care about is real GDP. Real GDP adjusts for inflations. So we'll look at all the previous years and we'll adjust to usually the latest year. So if we're looking at GDP from 2010, we're going to adjust for inflation and put 2010 GDP in terms of 2020 dollars. So that way we can adequately and correctly compare what did the GDP in 2010 look like compared to the GDP in 2020. If we don't adjust for inflation, then we're getting an apples to oranges comparison. We want apples to apples by using the same year's dollars across all the years. If we don't adjust for inflation, well, we're practically just using different currencies at that point, and we're not going to get an accurate comparison between years. All right. 
So what you want then is your GDP, real GDP, adjusted for inflation, to grow from one year to the next. You want your GDP per capita to grow from one year to the next. Uh, there are limits on how we measure GDP this way, right? This is just a list of uh, ways that it doesn't always account for everything that we do, right? But the business cycle, uh, I'll go through this quickly. Business cycle is how real GDP goes up and down over time. So it looks a little something like this, right? So you've got the peak, uh, you go into a recession where GDP shrinks, and then you hit the trough. You have a recovery period where GDP is expanding, which means we're making more stuff. You hit a recession where GDP is contracting, we make less stuff, and it goes up and down, up and down. All right. But over time, you wind up having this trend line, which is going upward. So even though GDP may go up and down over time, overall, it's going to be going up. At least that's your hope. Okay, so you can look at all this, it just shows you what happens at the peaks and the recessions and the troughs and all that stuff. Right? As you might imagine, during a recession, unemployment goes up, right? nobody's happy, etc. Uh, these graphs just show you where things are at. So this shows you real GDP going all the way back here to just after World War II. So this is adjust for inflation, right? real GDP. So you see it going up, and anytime you see one of these gray bars, that's recession. Okay, six months of contraction. So uh, you'll notice any even each one of the gray bars is your GDP shrinking a little bit. All right, and this is the thing is when we look at the business cycle here, we make it look like this perfect sine wave, but it doesn't look this way in reality. All right, you can have very irregular recessions and recoveries. Some recessions will last longer than others. You'll have recovery periods that can last a long time. Now, it used to be that I showed, uh, when I looked at this graph, like, oh, look how big the recession was, recession was here in 2008-2009. Uh, and look at this guy right here, right? So this is our COVID recession, which, oddly enough, may not actually qualify as a recession, uh, even though it sure is going to feel like one. But yeah, man, look at that drop. That is insane, all right? If you look at graphs from the past seven, eight months, they're crazy. Like, you can't imagine ever seeing anything quite like this. So you see this raw back here in 2008, 2009, and they compare it to what we've had in just the past few months. All right. So this is looking at GDP per capita. Again, big old drop right there. This is uh, just shrinking it down to looking at uh, per capita for uh, 2005 on. Again, you can see how dramatic that drop is compared to previous years. All right, that's it.